you want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over here, Drink man. Drink Yeah, good morning and welcome back. That's right, you are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. Yeah, I think that's true. And the man on the other microphone he is a great American and a great patriot. You all know him as... America! America! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is your boy Chris America coming to you live this Wednesday, July the 24th, 2019, here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. And Loudbeard, it's always a fun night when we hang out answer a few trivia questions, and drink a few beers. Yep, there we go. We did. We had a good time. We went and did some 90s trivia. Uh, that, yep. was a, that was a good era. Uh, we a rocked good time it. in time. Yeah, we did. We rocked it. Uh, came up a little short, though, at the end, huh? You know what? I, I'm starting to hate that, that trivia, that they do the final question, bet your points deal at the end. You're yeah, telling me it's, we, it's we led the whole nothing. way. We dominated the whole way, and one question is what sets us apart. I wish they had that in school. Like, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and fail this test, but I'll get the last question right. Uh, hey, that's right. You sleep through the entire uh, course, the, the mm-hmm. class, whatever it is, yep. and then that final exam, all you got to do is just uh, answer the last question right, and then you, you win, you pass. That's how it should be. But yeah, you're, you get, you're right. You, it's tricky. You get 50% right. And then you bet 50 points at the end of the school year, and you get 100% on one question. That's how it should be. That's what these trivia places do, man. This, I, I find this with more and more of these like bar, local joint type trivia. We went to, it was more of a wine bar. It was a little upscale, trendy yeah. little wine winery. Had beer there, too, on tap. So it was a nice place, but they, they bring in these trivia hosts, and these trivia guys are like, yes. We're going to make the last question, the most important one, and you don't know if it's going to be easy or hard, so just just randomly guess how many points you want to bet, and then whatever happens, happens. And then you and I, we, we stayed a little conservative, didn't we? Yeah. Well, see, I, when I hosted trivia, we did do the points thing, but you get to wager with your answer to show how confident you are in your answer. So you would ask the question first. And mm-hmm. then put the how many points you're wagering with your answer. I like that. Yeah. I like that. See, you should have been out there hosting Chris America. This should have been Cause then, your show. Because that's the other part of it is like you're you're blind bidding. That makes no sense. That's the other part. Like, okay, well, what if I don't want to bid all my points on the on your question that you're not telling me what it is? But then when I hear the question, now I do. I, I get that's how Jeopardy works, but we don't have to always be like Jeopardy. Why, why do we have to always do what Alex Trebek is doing? Just because he's the coolest guy in the world... Doesn't mean we have to do everything he does. Yeah, he's he's really quite the American Alex Trebek. Everybody loves Alex Trebek, so we just must emulate what he does in real life. And I don't know if I'm feeling it. The other anyway. thing that I did when I hosted trivia is, you know how like they do rounds. Yes. So we did like three questions, and you'd wager five, three, or one point assigned to each answer you give. But once you use a point value, you can't use it again. I like that. So you, you can get like nine points per round. Yeah. yeah we, this guy that did trivia last night, we need to give him some pointers. We need to show him the real way to do trivia because uh, yeah, I think it could well, have like, improved a little bit. Three times during the show, he's like, well, I thought the answer was this, but apparently it's this. So if you put either down, you're correct. And I'm like, what? Yeah, and I didn't mention this last night, but I, I kind of want to – Get your thought on this, and if any of our listeners want to chime in here on Twitter, uh, go ahead and hit us up at Scout Team Radio. But he was up there. We we go to this local winery, and 
he's up there and he's doing the trivia, and then he called out his wife. Did you hear that on the one question that was wrong? He's like, yeah, oh, my wife did. put yeah, this he question totally blamed together. His, he, he totally went Urban Meyer on her. Like, oh, this is my wife's fault. Yeah. Now, is that the right thing to do? Like, if I'm, I'm putting myself in that situation, now, his wife, I'm assuming, was not there. So no, he's she thinking wasn't. she will never, ever hear this, so I can go ahead and blame her. But that's a bad look. It's definitely an Urban Meyer. And he was wearing a Florida Gators shirt. So he was. Double whammy. He was wearing a double whammy. Uh, and I wanted to take his man card for getting the question wrong. I, I think if Scotty K is listening, he asked who won the ninety four who won the Super Bowl during the ninety four season, and we got the answer correct. But then he said the answer was the Cowboys, and I was like, No, no, sir. It's not the Cowboys. Yeah. In that time frame they won three out of four Super Bowls, but the one in the middle that they did not win was that one. And it wasn't the, the Super Bowl that was played in 94. It was the Super Bowl played in 95 for the 94 season. And he was very specific on that. Yeah, he was like the 94-95 season. And the Super yep. Bowl played in 1995. And so me and you, we, 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 we talked it out because we know basically every Super Bowl game between... Mm, I'd say I know everyone between 88 through today. Yeah, I probably. I think I could name them. Mm -hmm. I might get a, like a year or two flip flopped or something in the in there somewhere, but you know, pretty much we could name all of those. I think, a lot of cowboys um, in there. Yeah, I think ninety six through ninety nine might be difficult. And actually, two thousand two thousand one might be difficult. I think two thousand one to two thousand two was the Buccaneer season. Two thousand two thousand one was the Patriots. Or maybe I'm flipping it. Maybe it was two thousand two two thousand three was the Buccaneers. Yeah, see, so that's where I would. I'd have to go through them all. To kind of know, but if you're asking me like off the fly who played the 2001 Super Bowl, I can't just do it off the fly. I have to go through and be like, okay, well, the Broncos won in 98 and 99. Yeah, hmm. see, that's that's where I said yeah, I would have a tough go back time. To back. I see where, where it's a struggle, and I, I sometimes struggle remembering what I ate for lunch yesterday. So remembering a Super Bowl for 20, from 20 years ago, that's also challenging, but it is what it is. Now, uh, our now, good friend Scott Kaiser... Is yeah. tweeting in. He's responding mm -hmm. to you. See, I, he said, no, see, I call it the 95 Super Bowl because it's the same year the Braves won the World Series. But you guys are correct. It was the 94-95 season. That guy is a dummy. Yes, he was wearing a Gator shirt. He is a dummy. I agree. <laughs> poor poor wardrobe choices, huh? Yep, there we go. And it was one now of I'm those like, ask, fishing ask, shirts. Yeah. When they just throw a logo on a fishing it was. shirt. Mm. It was. And I'm, I'm going to ask. Fishing I'm going to ask. Twitter this, and they can be as honest as they want to be. Because I was very proud I knew this answer, and I made sure you guys knew how proud I was that I knew this answer. And I was the only person in the bar to get it right. But what was Robin Williams' um, first voiceover in an animated movie in the 90s? Or All what, right. What, we'll what movie was simmer. he a voice actor for first in the 90s for an animated movie? We'll see if Twitter can get it without looking, but we'll have to trust them. Yeah, there's no cheaters out there, right? Nobody's going to Google it. Nobody's going to Google whatsoever. it. Oh, yeah. So we had a good time. There's a lot of good trivia questions. Uh, we actually did a lot better than I thought we would. Like you said, we dominated each and every round. Uh, just we probably had uh, a little bad luck with that last question. Um, decided to, to push our cards in on the... Uh, we're already in the lead. Let's go ahead and keep it that way. Let's not, not bet all of our money. And we, we probably should have just gone all in, but who knows? If it was a hard question, we would have been loving the fact that we, we st stood pat. Yeah. Uh, Scotty Kaiser, slow down, buddy. He says, this is why baseball is greater than, and not just like one greater than. He had like 10 in there than other sports because they play their season and champion all within the same year, so you don't have many issues with remembering who won that year or that confusion. Just saying. I mean, that is a reason why baseball gets it right over other sports, but it's not. It's, it, there's not many of those. Uh oh, hot tweet coming in. Uh -oh. Answer to your Shane question. Omak. Well, wait, well, wait. We won't. We won't spoil it for everybody else. Shane O'Mac. Is it right? He's, is it the right answer though? I, I, mm. I'm not gonna say because other people can see his tweet. Mm. There you so, go. 
Shane Thank you, Shane O'Mac, for the he's, tweet he's, in. He's entered his answer into the to the trivia booth. All right, and you know what? I was thinking about this last night. We were we were one of the most iconic duos last night doing trivia together, mm-hmm. and uh, there there has been an announcement. One of the other most iconic duos in the world, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, are going to be back on the silver screen again. The two of them are 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 in a new movie called The Last Duel, and they're going to be back at it. It made me think, Chris America, are Matt Damon and Ben Affleck the best duo ever to don the movie screen? Are they the best movie duo ever? You know, you asked that question, hmm. and we've had an idea thro- floating around for a draft for a few weeks now. Maybe we should ask that question during our Fantasy Friday draft with our uh, best bromances. Ooh, there we go. Best bromances. I like it. That that would be a good fantasy draft. Um I ha- I have some I have some already prepared. I'm 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 like already thinking about this because as mm-hmm. soon as I saw that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, I'm like, are there any other iconic duos out there? And other than you well, and I, are... but we're more radio. Yes. We're more radio. Yep. Like the silver and, and... screen. I would mm-hmm. say um Vince Vaughn and Ooh, why can't I think of his name right now? The broken nose guy, Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. There you go. That was a good st- right off the top of your head. I like it. Mm-hmm. See, I I actually looked up a few and I was thinking, okay, let me think of some of the the good ones here. And I was I was sorting through, and uh, we can't forget these two were one of the original duos. Yeah, that's right, Cheech and Chong. Those guys yes. had more chemistry than any other duo I could ever think of. Yes, as far as actors go, yeah, for sure. Or, man, I wouldn't even thought of them when I was thinking of bromances because they're mm. they're so long ago that they're out of your mind. Ooh, thank you for reminding me of them. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to really research this one because all of my bromances were television, like like fictional characters that I love. Yeah, see, this could get interesting, right? This could be something now. Let we me could really get into yes. We can discuss this now. Do you consider Batman and Robin to be a bromance? Because I do not. No, I don't either. Okay, good. So you're thinking more... Because are you thinking more fictional character, or are you thinking more real-life well, guys that are well, playing the, together? The draft can be whoever, whatever bromance you want. It could be a bromance in sports, like you know, like uh, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. Great bromance. You know, okay. uh, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Um, LeBron James in the banana boat. Well, that was, you know, that was more like a, a bison, wasn't it? The banana boat oh. and four other guys. I don't know what your search history looks like. <laughs> um, Yeah, so, and I have some fictional ones that I'm not going to mention. I know Scotty Kaiser, knowing that him and I watch a few of the same shows, will appreciate some of my bromances. Uh, that I have in my mind. Oh, I won't say you're, you're going to tease them now. You're teasing yeah. them. This is, well, we've got our draft coming up Friday, and we're going to do fictional bromance. And, yeah, gonna, you're going to tease it out. We're going to have to wait till then to hear what these are. That's that's a tough tease. It is. I mean, it'll be here before we know it. July has flown by. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, I feel like July 4th weekend was just last week. Yeah, and now we're already like towards the end of July. The month is already coming to an end. It's already come and gone. School teachers, like we we hung out with a a friend of mine who's a school teacher. He's talking about going back to work next week. It's crazy. Oh, I don't. That's the one thing I I don't know that I could do as a school teacher is you get the summers off, which is fantastic, right? Like, and a lot of school teachers do summer camps and and different things, so they stay busy. But imagine if you're that teacher that just takes the whole summer off. Like, that week that you go back or that day that you go back has to be, like, the worst week ever. Like, you're sitting there like, oh, my God, I got all this freedom all summer long. And you start the clock all over again, and you're thinking, oh, I only have nine more months until I get off again. Yeah. This stinks. But money is a great motivator, and most of those teachers either don't get paid during the summer or they get paid very little because they, you know – spread it out throughout the year in a, in a weird way. So a lot of them are like, 
yeah, I don't want to go back to work, but I'm looking at my bank account right now, and I need to go back to work. That's true. Um, you know, another guy that I think is ready to get back to work, Mark Sanchez. Uh, he, he's been such an iconic figure in my life for a very long time. I've loved him in, in the, on the field as a football player. He's been just such an amazing guy. But he's hanging it up, Chris America. He's hanging his cleats up. And guess what he's going to don now? He's going to don the microphone. He is getting into the booth. So how do you feel about Mark Sanchez being your color analyst on your college football coming up this yeah, season? Yeah, I was going to say it better be college football. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how he does. He has the look for it. I just don't know if he, if he has the chops, you know, to speak and know what he's talking about. Now, the bar is Tony Romo now, isn't it? Yeah, it's or kind is of that a bad time bar? for... It is an unfair bar. That's a bad time for quarterbacks to retire and get into the booth because they're all going to be compared to Tony Romo. As long as he's better than that, um, that guy from Alabama. Oh, which Nick one Saban. Is he? No, no, no. The quarterback who does games now and he's on ESPN all the time. He's got the, you know, the pa- the face that you want to punch. Uh, let me look him up. <laughs> okay, uh, Kirk Herbstreet. No, no, he was at uh, you. Yeah, I know. I still wanted to punch him. The though. Sunshine Scooter. There you go. Uh, so I do want to reminisce a little bit about Mark Sanchez because, again, he, he was he was a great Redskin legend uh, this past season, coming in and, and playing the worst football of his career, which is okay. Greg I can McElroy. live with that. Oh yeah, there you go. He's terrible. He's the worst. So. I did want to mention a um, maybe a lesser known fact about Mark Sanchez. I don't know if you knew this or not, Chris America, but Rex Ryan has a tattoo of his arm on his arm of his wife wearing only a Mark Sanchez jersey. It's kind of like a pinup style tattoo of a his sexy wife wearing just a Mark Sanchez jersey. Hmm. What kind of how does that make you feel? Do you think uh, that's one of the best tattoos you've ever heard of, or what? I'm, one, I, I, I'm hoping this is a lost bet. Because if it's know. like the real deal, then it's super awkward. Like, imagine no, you're coming into practice one day, and your coach is like, Hey, Kyle, Kyle, Loudbeard, Loudbeard, come over here. Check out this tattoo I got. It's, it's of my wife, and she's wearing your jersey. How cool is that? Yeah, good one, coach. Looks good. Weird. And then, like, is his wife attractive? I hope she is. Because then it would be worse if she wasn't. Yeah, when I, I saw the picture of the tattoo, it's actually a really awful tattoo. It looks like, <laughs> you know, somebody that makes up. that much money, like, you have to go and go to and pay a good money for a really good artist. You don't go to the tattoo place that's right next to the liquor store and the pet store in the strip mall uh, on the seedy part of town. Like, you don't go there. They do tattoos, and I'm sure there's good artists at those types of places. But when you're Rex Ryan, you don't go there. You could definitely go somewhere where you can afford somebody that is going to do something that looks good. Like, it looks like it's one of those, like, 90s Tasmanian devil tattoos where the artist is just, eh, they're, they're okay. It just, I don't know. Not a good look, Chris America. I hope you get a picture of this. If you find it, can you help tweet it out for us? Put yeah, it out on Twitter, now. on Scout Team Radio. I, I That would be great because... So, okay, so I, I go to images, and there's actually images of him, like, getting the tattoo, and it co- kind of confirms my theory that he was drunk in Atlantic City one night or down at the, what is it called, the boardwalk? He was drunk at one boardwalk. Either of those locations in New Jersey and got this tattoo. Uh that's a very plausible situation. Uh you know, the normally tattoo places are like, "Oh, you can't come in and get tattooed when you're drunk." But if you go to the right part of Atlantic City, you can get anything done for the right amount of money and nobody'll care and yeah. Lost a bet, got drunk, did something on a whim. Is it Mark with a K or Mark with a C? Uh, Whichever one it is, I'm sure they uh, tattooed it wrong. No, it's with a K. No, 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 no. It's with a K, okay. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 
Now I'm second guessing myself. Um, hmm. Yeah. And again, having to reminisce about Mark Sanchez's career, the butt fumble. How sad is it to be a professional football player having a fairly long career in the NFL and your number one highlight from your entire career is fumbling the ball from your butt? A butt fumble? Yes. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's got to be one of the worst. I don't know if I can think of any other football player that has that stigma attached to him. And it's not like he was, you know, in the league for two or three years and just like a, you know, a guy that faded out. Like, he was in the league for a very long time, and he had some success across that, but still will always be known as the butt fumble. He was just another one of those guys that just kind of made it through the playoffs because of the great defense he had. Yeah. You can't true. name an iconic like moment. You're right, I can't. Now what's worse, the butt fumble for Mark Sanchez or the smoking Jay Cutler memes that came out and Jay Cutler, every time I see him I think he's smoking a cigarette now. Um, I mean I'd rather have cool smoking memes than a butt fumble. Yeah, it's a good point. Man, I miss Jay Cutler. When's he getting back in the booth? Is that happening soon? I know he had that. He signed the contract and then went back and to play for the Dolphins. the Dolphins. And then, yeah, you never heard about that ever since. He's never gotten a chance again, has he? Man, I need a little more Jay Cutler. I, I don't know that I, I can actually say that I've ever heard him talk other than at like a like a press conference where he's just like you know talking like I'm just I don't know. like I don't, I want to see some energy out of Jay Cutler. Maybe that's why he hasn't yeah, gotten another gig. Yeah, how he landed the, the hot chick from the hills is beyond me. Man, money will get you a whole lot of things. But, I mean, she has money, and she could she could have chosen a better quarterback, couldn't she? Who? Like who? Mark Sanchez? Yeah, I mean, Mark Sanchez is a better-looking guy than, than uh, Jay Cutler. Well, she was going for Tom Brady, but he had that supermodel wife locked up. So, yeah. She had to go next best. Smoking Jay. That's true. Could have gone with your boy Osweiler. Oh, rock out with your Brock out. Never gets yeah. old. Never gets old. Um, well, Chris America, we talked about great duos. Mark Sanchez and Jay Cutler being one. You and I being a great duo. M Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Uh, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Money Mayweather are also a big deal a duo that will always be linked together. And Floyd Mayweather dropping some, uh, I guess, some criticism out there to, to Manny on his Instagram account. This thing's going viral. A lot of people are talking about it. It is a trending topic right now on Twitter, on Instagram. And I'm going to read this for you real quick, and I want to see how you feel, and then we'll get what Pacquiao responds to this. But Floyd Mayweather, being the big Floyd Mayweather jerk that he is, he says, I find it real like ironic how every time Pacquiao's name is brought up in the media, my name is always attached to it. The man's entire legacy and career has been built off its association with my name, and it's about time you all stop using my brand for clout chasing and clickbait and let that man's name hold weight of its own. For years, all you heard was, Floyd is afraid of Manny Pacquiao. But what's funny is, when we finally fought, I won so easily that everyone had to eat their words. All of the so-called so-called boxing experts, critics, and jealous American fan base either went mute and ran for cover or made every excuse in the world as to why I should give Manny Pacquiao a rematch. My take on all this BS is that y'all are just upset that I broke Rocky Marciano's record and hate the fact that a black high school dropout outsmarted you all, beating all the odds, retiring undefeated while maintaining all my faculties simply by making smart choices and even smarter investments. Ultimately, I will always have the last laugh. Well, let's let's slow down on the smart choices part. You didn't always make smart choices, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, I got to say he kind of has a point, but then... I don't know any of Mayweather's other big opponents that he's fought as an outside casual fan. So his name has kind of benefited from Pacquiao as well. I agree with that. I, Pacquiao 
has helped they they helped elevate each other, right? You need a rivalry in sports for it to become even something more than just you. And that's been their rivalry. That's why they're associated with because they were two of the best boxers in the same time frame. So I, I think he's a little two of the jumping best overboard. boxers around the same weight class, yeah. Now, this is my conspiracy theory hat. Is he doing this to help build up a possible rematch? With Floyd Mayweather, you never know. You never know what his true intentions are, and that's where I will give him the smarts. Like I think he plays the media better than anybody. Oh, yeah. Th- that's where the intelligence comes in. That's the street smarts right there. He's like, I know how to build the hype, and boxing is all about hype. That is the number one goal when you're a promoter in boxing. But did you see uh, Manny House, Pacquiao's uh, response? I did. I did. Um, all right. So he says Floyd Mayweather. And his response is on Twitter when Mayweather's initial post was on Instagram. So now we're mingling social media. But that's okay. We'll go ahead and read the response anyway. It says, Floyd Mayweather, you come to my fight and then you use my name in a post, but I'm the one that is trying to stay relevant. Hmm. Emoji. If you want to be relevant again, hashtag Maypac2, and it's trending right now. Maypac2, trending right now on Twitter. Just fight already, guys. Which, by the way, sounds like an epic movie, too. Yeah. Maypac2, starring Jason Statham and The Rock. Hmm. See, when I heard it, I was thinking more of the sequel to Pixels, where Pac-Man comes back. No? Ooh. Was that a good movie? Pixels? No, it was definitely not a good movie. But I, I got some laughs out of it. Kevin Sandler, I'm Kevin Kevin James <laughs> and Adam Sandler. They're one person now. Iconic yeah. duo. There we go. Another iconic duo. Um Kevin James and Adam Sandler. Yeah, they had some funny parts. Uh Peter Dinklage is in it. He's he's got some funny parts, but overall, I mean, the premise for the movie is just absurd. Eh, it, I've watched it. I've laughed. I've enjoyed it. Not a good movie, though. But funny. Yeah, that's why I never saw it. Yeah, it, it's one of those movies that I could see would be, be tough to to spend any money on. Now, I think it's on, like, TBS from every now and again. So when I saw it, it was one of those, like, it was on, and I put it on in the background while I was uh, um, doing, like, you know, laundry or, or something. So it wasn't like I was sitting there entrenched into this movie, but... It was all right. Um, all right, so a couple minutes here before the break. I do want to ask you, what is the most money that you have ever spent for a pair of shoes, Chris America? You can be honest. You can, you can tell me if it was $7,000. It's cool. I get it. How much would you pay for a pair of shoes? Like, what's the most amount of money you would? I think I've been around, like, the 140 150 mark for some running shoes. Just because now I'm at the age where when I run, I need – the right pair of shoes for me or my legs will just like I'll get shin splints or I'll get a um like my IT band messes up quite a lot if I don't have the right shoes. So that's the only reason why. Otherwise all my other shoes I mean no, I'd have to look back. I have to try to remember when what how much my dress shoes were the last time I bought dress shoes because those are actually pretty expensive. So maybe around two hundred, three hundred bucks for a good pair of dress shoes. But like regular pair of shoes I'm gonna wear every day. Probably around between fifty to a hundred. All right, that's fair enough. Is where my where my budget for shoes are. All right, so uh, shoe collector, a guy named Miles Nadal, mm-hmm. uh, he spends four hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars at auction for a pair of nineteen seventy two Nike Waffle Racing Flat Moon shoes. Was this a good deal? Mm, I don't know. I have to see, uh, like, I mean, you're talking about collecting things. I guess it would be. I'd have to look at the market. <laughs> That's why I hate collecting, like, collectors. Like, they overprice everything. But if that's what the market says it's supposed to be, then that's what the market says. I would never spend that much for shoes. Unless yeah, somebody so- unless somebody told me, like, hey, if you want to get forget gold, forget Bitcoin, you need to get into shoes, then I might, you know, make those investments. Four hundred thirty-seven thousand. It was the most expensive uh, pair of shoes ever. 
from what I'm I'm understanding here. Which is this. crazy that it's just some 1972 like Nike running shoe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the last of its kind or something crazy. Now, if he's now, just going to put it on his wall and just stare at it until the day he dies, it's a crappy, crappy purchase. Well, I think he is. So he's a, a known shoe collector. And this is the crazy part. So there was 99 shoes up for auction at this uh, auction that was happening for shoes. And out of those 99 shoes, this, uh, this collector, Miles Nadal, he purchased all 99 shoes over eight hundred thousand dollars worth of investment he put into all of these shoes that were on this auction. I mean, that's an obsession. Yeah, I think we've gone yeah, too far. I think far. we gotta. I think we gotta use the word investment loosely here, because again, if he's just buying these shoes and putting them on his wall till the day he dies, then it's not an investment. It's a stupid purchase. Uh, it's it's yeah. I, I definitely think it's a stupid purchase, but you know there's some crazy people out there that love shoes. Shoes became a big, big deal. Yep. All right, Chris Chris America, I've got one thing that I'm going to come back with after this commercial break. I want to ask you, if you were a heavier set gentleman and you went to the store or you went online and ordered, let's say, an extra, extra large pair of clothing, and when you received it and opened it up, it had a diet bar inside – would you be offended? Hold your answer till after a quick commercial break. <laughs> hey, Kawhi, what are you laughing at, man? This isn't funny. Fantasy sports reimagined. FanDuel, that's what I'm talking about. It is more than just fantasy sports. It's the best way to watch the games, win real cash, and bring the action right to your living room. Just choose a contest, make your picks, watch, and win. And if you go to FanDuel.com slash STR today, you can get a $5 deposit bonus. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash STR. <laughs> Come on, man. This is not a laughing matter. If you've been listening to Scout Team Radio for a long time, you know that myself, Loudbeard, has placed a bet or two in his day. That's right. I've lost the beard bet. I lost the romper bet. But one place I don't like losing is when I bet money, and I can easily do that at MyBookie. That's right. You can go to MyBookie.ag, use promo code 12OZSports, and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of money. Do it. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. <sighs> 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Thank you all for listening in and coming back with us. Once again, we are Scout Team Radio. He's Chris America. I'm Loud Beer. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We also simulcast on the Full Press Radio Network, and we're part of the Barn Burner Radio Network. We're all over the place. You can catch us anywhere. If you can't catch the live show, make sure you hit our podcast up. You can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, anywhere you find a podcast. Search Scout Team Radio. You can find us. Go ahead and listen. You can listen to yesterday's episode, which was absolutely lit, by the way. Just throwing that out there. 
and you can listen to our first episode two years ago. You can listen to it all. We've got it all right there on the the library. It's everywhere you can find it. Um, get social with us. We like to get interactive with our listeners. Hit us up on Twitter, at Scout Team Radio. We'll read your tweets on the air. We've got Shane O'Mac coming in hot. He's answering our trivia question today, which I don't think we ever got to. Chris America is going to have to finish that off here. you got yeah. your tri- trivia to do. And we had <laughs> Scott Kai, I for completely forgot about that. I just reminded myself. And then it was like one of those situations where the light comes on. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, we got we to gotta go back to that. Uh, Scott Kaiser tweeting in at us today. The Mulatto Gelato, I believe, is now his name. So we got to change that. No more Scott Kaiser. He's Mulatto Gelato. I like it. Uh, so Chris America, there has been a controversy that has happened. There are consumers out there that are butt hurt right now, and I feel for those those consumers. You won't believe it. Okay. All right. So there has been numerous complaints to Forever 21 because when these shipments of clothing were sent to people's houses, there were complaints that were coming in that people that were extra large people or the heftier sized people were getting these Atkins bars in their shipment. And they're calling and complaining, Chris America. They are not very happy. Uh, Forever 21 is, is just sending the wrong signal out to their consumer like hey you need to be on a diet bar if you're ordering an extra extra large is this fair to these people that you know we're guessing in some mixed signals out here we want you to buy our clothing but we want you to get skinnier is this is this is this wrong this is where this is why i could never own a business land beard because this isn't forever 21 making this decision this is some guy who's in the warehouse that you know, helps out with the shipments and stuff or packs the boxes or gets the orders together, throwing those in there as a joke. Like, it's probably like a, a whole warehouse joke. Everybody in the warehouse is in on it. They have good laughs. It's what helps them get through their day of monotonous work and physical labor is to throw these uh, Atkins bars into their to their deal. Well, this is the twist to this story. This is why I like this story so much. I brought it up. This okay. isn't our, our typical Scout Team Radio content, Ooh. but and I needed Shemalo to bring it ding up. Dong twist. Yep. So the problem with this is the Atkins bars were part of this program that they've been doing for a long time where they started doing freebies into each box. And so they have different things that they would put in, in, the, in the boxes. So they cycle through different items. Well, Either they partnered with Atkins and they put an Atkins bar in every package that got sent out, no matter what the size the person was. But the only complaints that came in were from heftier, larger people. Well, then if Forever 41 or 21, whatever it's called, can prove that that's what it is, then everybody just needs to get over it and move on with life. Are we be, being too sensitive as a society? If if you like, if you received an Atkins no, bar mean, in your package, if it was done purposefully, yes, you should be offended. <laughs> if like if you were targeted and like that's their way of going about doing it, of course it would be offensive. I mean, what else is there to say about that? But if it's just everybody's in it, in on it, like everybody gets one, and you find that out, then you say, oh, okay, then you then you feel kind of embarrassed for complaining, don't you? I would. But I think the people complaining probably didn't care. They were like, no, no this is no, this is, this is still wrong. Offensive. I'm never buying from you again. I, the, that's it. Shut down the, the, the cheap labor over, over in China that's making these clothing. I don't, I'm not ever buying from you again. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to the Gap. <sighs> There's so many jokes with that so little time. I don't want to be <laughs> offensive to our overweight listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean... I do feel like the days of just taking one on the chin are, are over. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a different day and age for us, Chris America. All right. So it's it's Wacky Wednesday. and on Wacky, Wacky Wednesday. What's Wacky Wednesday. Uh, I was looking at a, a trending hashtag, and on Twitter right now, odd ways to pass time is trending. And – I just wanted to, to briefly go through a couple of these that I saw that I thought were kind of funny. 
And uh, if you got any odd ways that you like to pass time, Chris America, um, yeah, go ahead and share those with us. But I just wanted to say this one watch is baseball in it. No, it's absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> it should yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, that's not it. Um, so thinking of all the ways to use the force inappropriately. Come on, we've all done that, right? Yep, mm -hmm. we've all mm -hmm. been there. Sometimes I'm sitting there on the couch, like, ah, I really want to get that drink that I left up on the kitchen counter. Ah, uh, and I, I put my hand out, and I'm just reaching for it. Now, that would be an appropriate way to use a force, but I'm sure there's some inappropriate ways that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, maybe if this wasn't such a family show, I would get into some of those other ways. we got to bring back Scout Team After Dark every once in a while. And we do. We do. We need to make it like a semi-annual uh, extravaganza. Maybe we could talk the Golden Ghost into coming back for that. Mm. We'll see if we can make that happen. All right. What about this one? Uh, figuring out what your uh, animal's voice, like your cat or your dog, would sound like and what accent they would be speaking in. You ever uh, just throw out a, a voice for your, your animal and, and, you know, no one's looking? What would my, my, what would my dog sound like? Give it a little accent. Give it a little voice. I mean, would it be more Sean Connery or or what? I think my cat would sound like Sean Connery. Hmm. Your cat would sound like Sean Connery. What would Wendy sound like? Uh oh, she would be really high pitched. Like I like the awkwardness when it the voice doesn't fit the body. Yeah. 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 It's like when uh, somebody's a voiceover actor and you're like, oh man, they have a cool voice, and then you see them in person and you're like, oh my god, this is why they've never seen I've never seen them on screen. That would be my dog. So, did you prepare for this one? Because I'm scrolling through these, and these are awful. Like most Twitter, yeah, I, things. I did, I did. It's all about preparation. Ninety nine percent preparation and one percent perspiration. That's what I always say. Is that a saying? What about Somebody making out with a tree? Sorting fruits from your tree for your, from your own trees by type into size in ripeness cohorts. Yeah, that's somebody with too much time on their hands. Um, I also like learning to play the cowbell. Uh, it reminds me of my most favorite Saturday Night Live skit of all time and the greatest of all time. Don't at me. Uh, what about scrapbooking all of your mug shots, Chris America? Is that something that you do on your uh, odd way to pass time? I actually do. <laughs> they look less uh, threatening if they're bedazzled and... <laughs> In scrapbook put, form. Put some flowers around them, you know, little sparkles, a little glitter paint. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny, but it, I got to chuckle. Um, <laughs> uh, last one I've got, butter sculpting. Now I want to talk to you about this. This is a crazy pastime, butter sculpting. Much better than ice. Ice melts too fast. Butter holds its shape a little bit better. What are some of the best ways to pass time? Butter sculpting, definitely. I don't think I've ever done that. Who does yeah, these I... things? <laughs> now, here's one that I would get into. And it's not that like I've done it to pass time, but like when you're cleaning and you start doing it, you want to do it more, and that's shredding paper. Like through a shredder or actually yeah, just yeah, yeah. like ripping it yourself? No, no, no. Like through the shredder. I don't know what it is that fascinates me about shredding paper, but I've always been like, oh, I love that. Uh, it's the sound. It's it's how it goes in so perfect. And then you look through, like if you have one of those clear shredders, you can see it coming out and it's just completely different. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Maybe you have a different <laughs> obsession with it I than guess, I do, man, but that's I, like, cool. Don't you have like a weird fascination where you get satisfaction out of something simple like that yeah I'm trying to think what what i would fall under now i guess shredding paper is not too bad i gotta give it to you I'm trying to think of what other like popping um bubble wrap oh that would yeah be another, another one. good one where you're just sitting there and you're like i don't know why i keep doing this but for some reason it's very very mesmerizing man i wish i had some bubble wrap in the house right now in the studio I could go I could now. Go this off. is a good one. I have done this before. Odd ways to pass time: watch really bad infomercials. There's been a few times, like I don't do it so much anymore because I don't stay up this late anymore. But man, when I was a teenager and in, like my early twenties, I would get stuck on these infomercials from time to time at late at night. 
some of them are are so bad they're good. Exactly. I mean, I can watch that Sham Wow stuff for hours. All right, Loudbeard, I have a, another person trying to take the Florida man title. All right. This is a Memphis man, so I don't know if Memphis Spence is listening in today, but he should be proud of, of Memphis man this morning. Uh, Loudbeard, you, have you ever been on a bad date? I know it's been a uh, while. Yeah, uh, yeah, everybody's been on a bad date, yes. Yeah, bad first date. Um, I think this Memphis woman probably takes the cake. I don't know if you ever listened to that radio station that does the second date update. I used to listen to it just for that segment every morning it's, at eight fifteen. Yes, um, I've heard it. This one, there is, there's no. Ch- I mean, if there is a chance at a second date, I don't know. But a Memphis woman was going on a date with a guy. It was a guy she knew from high school, and he asked her to dinner. Right? Seems mm-hmm. pretty, pretty like everyday normal stuff here. And first warning, is this a warning sign, first of all, Flatbeard? If you're a woman, is this a red flag? Your date showing up without a car? Yes. So that should have been like, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. Even if he has like a good excuse, like, ah, oh, my car just broke down, but I didn't want to miss this date. Mm. Yeah, it's still a red flag. You still got to gotta look at it. If, if, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. If you see red flags from the beginning... You run. But yeah, okay, no car. Gotcha. All right. Well, she she says, you know what? I'm going to power through this date. We're already here. Let's go on this date. So they took her Volvo. And then the man asked her to stop at a gas station and get and get him a cigar. Now, I don't know if like he's like, hey, can we stop so I can get me a cigar? Or you stop and you go buy me a cigar. Nope, it is. It is. <laughs> All right, red flag number two. I just confirmed it. The man, Kelton, asked her to stop at a gas station and get him a cigar. Is that red flag number two, Loudbeard? Uh, that's definitely red flag number two. But you said gas station? Yeah. Okay, okay. I was thinking, I'm like, there could be some circumstances where it's like you're going to like a high-class bourbon bar and you're like, oh, stop at the cigar uh, place and let's buy a pair of like expensive Cuban cigars that are really fancy and... No, if it's a gas station, it's definitely like grape flavored black and milds. Well, here's the thing: it really doesn't matter which one they stop at. He's making her get it for him. Yes, that's that's not good. That's no. the big time red flag. Like but she's got to buy it for him. Yeah, no, got my girl this. here. My girl here. She stays strong. She went inside to buy it. Okay. Mm, no, I don't. I don't get it. So this is wifey material right here. She's driving you. She's she's getting like first date. She's buying you cigars. No, you got to treat my this wife's girl. Listening. You got to treat this girl right from here on out, don't you? Yeah. Um. Do you think that's what uh, good old Kelton does? Oh no, nope, no, nope. not at nope. all. When she comes out with his cigar, uh, her date and her car were gone. Yeah, about that. Uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey. so Pew's mother picked her up. They used GPS to track the car. They followed it. Hold on. They followed the signal to a drive-in theater. We need to move to Memphis, Loudbeard. They have drive-in theaters in Memphis. I thought those were all dead. No, no, there's there's a few left in the world. Just a handful. So they find him at the drive-in theater with her car, and Pew found inside is her date. And the uh, the the victim's god sister, and they were on a date. Oh, so the boy they... stole her car and went and picked up another chick to go on a date with. You gotta be kidding me! And that other date was the original date's god sister. Like they're god sisters. Only in Memphis. Only in Memphis. There's a Florida man, and then there's the Memphis man. The Memphis, Memphis man. man oof, he's some of the worst. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, that that's a tough <laughs> date, Chris America. <laughs> that takes that, some balls. There's people out there in the world like that, though. That does it. It does. It surprises me, but doesn't surprise me all at the same time. Right. <sighs> I feel like there's more to it. Like I think he knew her. Like there. Like why would. I mean, were the police called? Like, if your car was stolen and you didn't know the guy, would you just go follow him? 
I don't know. They're... Well, yeah, because they said they were high school friends or they knew each uh, other from high school. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that conversation. Like, I don't want the police involved because I'm gonna go beat his ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be an awkward situation. I would just love to be a fly on the wall when she got there. Like that's a that's a Jerry Springer know. in real life episode right there. Chicks dig dig the bad boy though. That's the problem. And this see, is this what, is where this ABC is Seven like did it wrong. The story ends with Pew says they that's where they found her car and the guy with her god sister on a date. They called police. Griffin was arrested on the spot, and then that is the end of the story. What? No. No, no that's you need more ending. ABC Seven. You we need, need to get to Hollywood in. Yeah, we could chor- choreograph a nice fight scene at the end of this. Slapping, yeah. hair pulling. Oh, yeah, this, would, this is going to get good. That's where we've got to get involved and be a little bit more um, theatrical when we do things like this. Just We can up, up our game a little I agree. bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so I'm looking here at some of these other stories I got going on. We got about four minutes left. Uh, eh, not not nothing too crazy going on. Uh, Zion Williamson he signs with Michael Jordan's brand. He is the heir apparent. I hope this guy's actually good. If he comes in and sucks, the whole world's gonna crash because he's been hyped up like crazy, man. Yeah, sorry, I was listening to the news story. I was trying to see if they had more information. <laughs> um, so I had two things going on in my ear at once. Yeah, no, but no I was worries. Like, oh, this is a bad idea. I'll play it later. Doc Gooden arrested for going the wrong way down a one-way New York street. Second time he's been arrested in the last six weeks for driving under the influence. Uh, This includes a June 7th incident where he was suspected of cocaine uh, possession and driving under the influence, man. Poor Doc Gooden has gotten, gotten himself into trouble again. And he he's a guy that's been having problems his whole life with uh, addiction and, and, and drug problems. But if you're driving the wrong way down a one-way street, things are not good. Yeah. Well, we've all been there at least once in our lives, though, right? You make a wrong turn, you miss the sign, and then you realize your mistake. But it's usually you realize it right away. And so you kind of back <sighs> back back yourself up. I've, I know I've done it before, where I, especially on those like New York streets, or, and I've never been to New York, but... Just those streets where we're not used to, you and I, we're not used to driving in these grid one-way streets. I hate driving downtown because I'm not used to it in Orlando. That's a good point. You, you bring up a fair point. But I do want to say I have a fact from when I was in college. I knew two different guys that both got DUIs in college. And you know why both of them were pulled over? Because they were going the wrong way. They weren't going the wrong way. No headlights on at 3 in the morning. Yeah. That's another one. Going the wrong way down a one-way street is just like, yeah, it might happen once in your life when you're somewhere where you don't know where you're going. I'm, I'm pretty sure Doc Gooden lives in New York. It's probably yeah. a street he goes on all the time. All the time, yeah. Yeah, his circumstance, I would say it wasn't an accident. No, 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 say. it definitely wasn't. I'm, I'm just saying, like, we've all been there, but then you realize the mistake right away, especially yeah. in New York where I'm assuming there's cars parallel parked. And so yep. when you see that you're going one way and all the cars are parallel parked the other way, you're going the wrong way. Uh, yep. I, no, th- there's no excuses here. I'm with you. You know. You should know better, Doc Gooden. Poor guy. Uh, you know, these athletes can't stay out of trouble. Last night, you, you told me a story. Adrian Peterson's in trouble. He yeah. had an investment. He had a bad investment. What happened with that, Chris America? Uh, all of his money is not only is all of his money gone because he... He made an investment to a guy who claimed to be an investor and then took all of his money and donated it to Donald Trump's campaign. And then now he's $8 million in debt. So he's made over $100 million in his lifetime career of an NFL football player, and all of it's gone. It's all in... Like, if Donald Trump gets reelected, you can blame Adrian Peterson. Okay. Now we've got somebody to blame. Adrian Peterson... How do you make a hundred million dollars and you have nothing to show for it but debt? I I still to this day I don't get the lottery winners, the athletes, all of these people that get all of that money that just have no idea what they're doing and they go broke so quick. I still to this day do not understand, but it is a plague that is 
that happens. It just happens. I can see if you talk to some some guy or gal who just gives you a really good story on an investment, and they get, you know, if you have a hundred million dollars in the bank and they get ten, maybe twenty million dollars out of you, that's understandable. If they get anything more than that out of you, that's on you, man. You shouldn't be putting more than twenty percent of the money you have into one basket. Absolutely not. Diverse. A five diversify your investments. There you go. And then what? you should always get a second opinion on these matters too. So you you don't just have one financial guy in your corner. You need like, especially when you have that much money on the line. I want like four or five guys that I can run it past and say, what do you what do you think about this this thing this person's pitching me? You got to trust trust the process. You got to know the yeah. people. You can't. The problem is when you have that much money, you don't know who to trust because everybody's out to get your money, Chris. America. They out to get your money. Uh, one last question for you before we're out: Donald Glover versus Jamie Foxx. Who's the most talented actor? The debate is raging right now on Twitter. What are your thoughts? I think you got to go with Jamie Foxx for longevity, but Donald Glover is well on his way. I agree. Jamie Foxx all the way. Donald Glover will be there soon. Yeah. Great show, my I mean, friend. Donald Glover is like the Patrick Mahomes, and Jamie Foxx is the Tom Brady. And I know Scott Kaiser is going to hate that I just made no, Tom Brady and comparison. Jamie Foxx the same person. <laughs> <laughs>